And now it's time for Power of Prophecy with your host, former professor at the University of Texas at Austin, career United States Air Force officer, and best-selling author, Tex Mars. Hello, friends. This is Tex Mars, and welcome to another edition of Power of Prophecy. Well, talking about prophecy, we're going to really go into it today. You know, oh my. You know, Ezekiel chapter 8 is a fabulous chapter in which Ezekiel is told by the Spirit of God to go dig in the walls. He goes and digs in the walls and, oh, he sees some, there's a, a, he digs a hole in it. Can you imagine? I, I mean, th- those were almost rock. Those, those walls were made of, you know, Heavy material. And he just dug and dug and dug. And till, and God said, look in and see what you see. And oh my goodness, he saw things. Well, today we're going to dig in the wall a little bit. We're going to see some things. First of all, I want to bring to your attention Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 2, 25 and 26. I, I think these in, in these days, many people have asked me, when is Jesus coming? It, isn't the Antichrist going to come first? Is it the, the, the rapture going to occur? Or will we have to suffer through the tribulation period? And a lot of people are really worried about this. And, you know, a gentleman you know, came to see me not too long ago, and he said, Tex, if we don't get raptured out of here first, if, if the Antichrist comes and brings terrible tragedy to the planet earth and we're still here i will lose my faith in god oh my goodness i said no no don't don't do that brother <laughs> no, don't don't lose your faith he said well the bible says clearly we're going to be raptured before the tribulation it's going to be pre-tribulation well i said to him now you might be reading the bible wrong what if you're mistaken you know, oh, no, I'm not mistaken. He was so sure of himself, you see. Oh, please turn, if you could, to Revelation chapter 2, verses 25 and 26. Now, the Spirit is talking to the seven church ages here, the seven churches. And this church is at Thyatira. And he, he tells the people there, but that which ye have already Hold fast till I come. Now, I don't know when that church is or where it's at exactly. I think all of these churches, he's really applying this lesson to all of us because each of us is somehow within this church, within this church age. They're all occurring right now. So these are warnings to all of us right now today. Whatever you have, whatever you hold, If you're a Christian, if you believe in Jesus Christ, hold fast till he comes. Oh, I I should have, maybe I should have grabbed this man by the shirt and said, hold on, (laughs) hold on just a minute till Jesus comes. Don't give up so easily because, I mean, you know, hold a little bit of possibility there that maybe you've got the wrong thinking, the wrong, I mean, believe that Jesus will do what he says. Hmm. Verse 26 is very fascinating. It says, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Did did you hear that, folks? Well, that's incredible. If you overcome, overcome who? Well, the devil, the Satan. If you're an overcomer, it doesn't mean you may get battered around, beaten a little bit. I think we all are, to one extent or another. Look at the world around us. The world is crazy. The world has gone insane. And Christians everywhere are under attack. And we think we're, we've got it so tough in America. They're fighting us on, you know, putting transgenders in bathrooms so they can be there to molest little girls and boys. And, oh, just horrible things that, are, that our, our president is pushing down on us. And they're forcing us to bake cakes or to serve people that are homosexual, and, and I mean, just terrible things they're making us do. 
But listen to me, my friend. Hold on. H hold on. <laughs> you're, you're an overcomer. These things aren't going to kill you. They will kill the one making you do them. I promise you that. <laughs> but think of those Christians right now today over in Armenia, over in Iraq, in Syria, in the Middle East, being butchered by the Islamic radicals. Think about them. I, I, I mean, many of them are dying for the, their faith. They're being killed. Their wives are being raped. Their children are being raped and, and tortured. The pastors, their churches are burned down. These terrible things have not yet happened in America. Oh, they, they probably will. Oh, yes, they, they, they will. They will, it will get to that with things getting worse and worse. Paul said it would happen. Things will grow worse and worse with men deceiving and being deceived until he said the end comes. But we haven't got that far yet. We are, we're fortunate. We still have some liberties. We still have some hope in the world, but maybe we shouldn't trust in the world at all. Hold fast to what you have until he comes. Don't give it up. I mean, I know men now that are in churches and pastors that are compromising as fast as they can. I mean, in the United States, probably the two most famous pastors are Rick Warren of Saddleback Community Church. He's called America's Pastor out in California. But then there's the, uh, the smiley boy, Joel Osteen in Houston. But what do they have to say? Are they standing up for our, our Christian duties? Are they saying, wait just a minute, we're not going to have little girls and boys go in bathrooms with grown men that are perverts? We're not going to do all these. We're not going to marry men to men and women to women. We're not going to have same-sex marriage. We will not do these things. They're against God's laws. No, they're just going along. Well, you know, let the government do whatever it wants. You know what? We're just going to be, we're going to be so happy and, and, and God's going to reward us so much. He's going to give us new cars and new houses and, and fur coats and, 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 oh, we're going to be so prosperous. God wants us to be rich and wise. Oh, meanwhile, people are being slaughtered around the world. They're not talking about all those Christians being murdered overseas. I mean, you go to Tel Aviv and you go to the old city in Jerusalem, carry a Bible in your hand and watch out. The old Jews there will spit on you. They'll spit on you. But Joel Osteen and Rick Warren have nothing to say about that. No, nothing to say about that. I've written an entire book called Pastors and Churches Gone Wild. Pastors and Churches Gone Wild. They're, they're going, they're, they're nuts. They're, they're, I mean, we, we could talk for five or six hours straight on just the things that I record in my book. Pastors and Churches Gone Wild. They're not overcomers. These pastors and churches like it just the way it is. And their paychecks are going to get bigger and bigger. And guess what? They, they, it's all tax exempt anyway. You give a hundred dollar gift to that church and it's going to, you know, you're going to be rewarded because it's going to be tax exempt. But you give a hundred dollars to power of prophecy. We're not tax exempt. We told the government you can take your tax exempt and give it to the Muslims. Give it to Satan's church. Cause that's what it's going to be. No, we're not, we're not tax exempt at power of prophecy. Because they tell us what we can preach if you're tax exempt. They tell us what Bible we can use. They tell us we have to go in with the Pope and go all, you know, who, who's, who's, who says, who am I to judge a homosexual? Who are you? You're supposed to be the Pope, the leader of all the world's Christians. But of course you're not. You never were. It's a hoax. You're not an overcomer. You go right along with them. You don't keep God's works until the end, you already quit doing them. Oh, I know you do some humanitarian things. It looks good. Just like the Masons have their burn center, the shrine. And they have their big fancy Muslim caps and they, they help little kids at their burn centers. Good for them. And then they go in and they worship basically Satan in their lodges. But think about this. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, 
To him will I give power over the nations. I, I tell you, my friends, if you want to know who's going to end up leading the new world order, and there's going to be a new world order, a great new world order, one from God, not, the, not these globalists, not these men, not from Satan. Satan already offered Jesus the world. Talk about a new world order. He took him up and said, look at, look at all the world. I'll give you all of this if you'll just worship me. That would have, would have been so easy. Jesus, yes, absolutely. That's what I want. He could have said that. But he told the devil, <laughs> don't try to tempt me. Don't try to tempt the Lord thy God. Basically, he said, get out of here. <laughs> You're wasting your time. What if we as Christian pastors throughout this United States had told the devil, same-sex marriages, you're wasting our time. Get out of here. We're not going to perform them. We're not going to be witnesses to them. There will be no same-sex marriages in America. Not unless God said so, and he's not going to say so, because he made it very clear in the Old Testament and the New Testament. There's Adam and Eve, and as you know, the old saying, not, there's not Adam and Steve. So if you overcome, if you keep God's works unto the end. He will give you power over the nations. You're going to end. We're going to end. It's all going to be ours. This is our inheritance. Do you know that, my friends? This is your inheritance. Well, God's got an inheritance for you. He chose you before the foundation of the world. This is the whole thing. People tell me, well, Jews are God's chosen people. I want to tell you about you being God's chosen people. You're one of them. If you know Jesus Christ. Well, I'm not a Jew. Well, I don't care what you are. If you are a Jew, that's fine. We accept you if you know Jesus Christ. And and you're gonna be you're gonna be you're you're gonna make history, my friends. <laughs> Someday you say you mean you knew about me before I was ever born, Lord. You you, you chose me. Before the world began, before there was even an earth and, a, and these stars in the sky, you chose me, little old me. <laughs> wow. In fact, verse 28 here of Revelation says that he will give you the morning star. Well, who is the morning star? That's Jesus Christ. That's what you're going to get. <laughs> well, in the 1970s, you know, I remember the 1970s. Just before I started this uh, ministry, before I began Bible Home Church and Power of Prophecy, the pre-trib, that's what they call it, the pre-trib rapture theory was all the vogue. It still is, I suppose, in most churches. It's really big in evangelical churches. I don't think the Episcopals and the Methodists and Presbyterians know much about it. But if you're a Baptist, if you're a Pentecostal, if you're one of those churches, why well, you got to believe it. That's I mean, hey, you're not even a Christian if you don't believe in pre-trib. Now, you know, Juan and I began our ministry, I think it was in 1986. And right away, I've been getting, I started, you know, I had a, a book that was a number one best-selling book called Dark Secrets of the New Age. And I began getting phone calls and letters from all over America. And, and, and pastors would invite me to come to their churches. But they would say, now, you, you have to be a pre-tribber. Or you can't come to our church. <laughs> well, my book didn't talk about pre-trib. Now, I understand there's other theories out there. One's called mid-trib. And another's called post-trib. And, and then, of course, there's the preterist. Now, don't want to talk about any of these things. Because you can't find these words in the Bible. They don't have them in the Bible. They're not there. Apparently, God didn't care enough about them to put them in the Bible. I mean, if you're, if you're going to index and look at it and see, well, let me find out where it says pre-trib. Let me find out about mid-trib. Let me find out about a post-trib. You're wasting your time. They won't be there. But I was told, are you pre-trib? Most people are pre-trib, you see. And, and you know, and I, I, I'm sort of a Baptist Pentecostal type of guy. I just believe in Jesus Christ. So the Baptists sort of accept me and the Pentecostals sort of accept me, I suppose. I haven't joined any of them because I just joined the Church of Jesus Christ. And maybe you're with Christian Missionary Alliance or 
uh, the Lutheran Church. You're, you're, you're with some other, you might even be a Catholic, but you don't agree with the Pope. Everything is going on. Oh, well, okay. Good, good. <laughs> you're headed the right way. <laughs> Jump on my bandwagon. <laughs> I have a lot of folks out there that are Catholic that are all kinds. And, and, and we're, we're, you know, keep studying the Bible and God will take you step by step. Principle by principle, he'll take you item by item and, and you'll, you'll learn, you'll, you'll know what's what with God. I'm still learning, my friends. I haven't, by the no way have I perfected my knowledge. <laughs> and I thank God. And every day when I read the Bible, I'm, I'm shocked at certain things that I read. I, I mean, for, just for this talk today, I've learned so much, but I thought I already knew these things. I'd read them in the Bible before. But then I read them, there's, it's, the Holy Spirit is instructing me some more. I guess before I wasn't strong enough to take what was you know, there. But God says, okay, now you're ready. <laughs> We're going to take you up the next. <laughs> well, thank you, Lord. I guess my brain's just not big enough. Maybe yours is, friend, and you know everything instantly. And I'll tell you something, that is the astonishing thing. The, the instant you come to know Jesus Christ, it seems you get so much smarter. I've seen people that were smokers and drinkers and dopers and they believed in abortion and, and all kinds of, and you know, they just suddenly changed over, over, overnight instantaneously. <laughs> they were so much smarter, knew so much just because they knew Jesus Christ. Well, they said to me, are you a pre-trib? And you know, I, I didn't know anything. I didn't even know what those categories were and i didn't know you'd be discriminated against why well, you'd be excommunicated and kicked out of the church if you were not pre-trib <laughs> most of people who were not pre-trib they were shunned by the prophecy experts or supposed experts now let's just take some of those experts like hal Lindsay, pat robertson jimmy swaggart john wolvard and of course there's tim lahay of left behind book and tv movie fame these are the experts. They're all pre-tribbers, of course. And most of these experts, it turns out, were bogus. <laughs> they were. They're bogus. Hal Lindsey's books were, were not even written by him. They were ghost written by an unknown woman. Well, I know her now. Her name is C.C. Carlson. Yeah. Lindsey himself is an uneducated. I don't mind that. I know I have a lot of friends that are uneducated. He's an un uneducated tugboat captain. Now, what's a tugboat captain doing writing a book called The Late Great Planet Earth that's celebrated everybody, everywhere as the pre-trib truth? Well, it seems like he went to a seminar where another pastor named R.B. Theme talked about pre-trib and Bible prophecy and how Lindsay went to his seminars and took notes. And then he went out and got a ghostwriter named C.C. Carlson Carla Carl Carlson is her name. And she wrote this book with Hal Lindsey's, you know, help. She wrote The Late Great Planet Earth. It seems that R.B. Theme was very angered about it and, 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 and sued. He sued. You know, that's my book. I should get credit for it because he wrote it from my notes. Hal Lindsey did a book some years ago and I was reading it. And I got to chapter, I don't know, 10 or 11. And the words sure seem familiar. <laughs> they should have been familiar. They were Tex Mars's words. They came from one of my books. He used my words, wrote a whole chapter using my book. Now, folks, I don't mind. You can use any chapter you want. Just let me know and give me some credit. Don't just write it and say, I wrote this. Oh. In any case, all, all, all these other people, they use ghost writers. I mean, it, it turns out that Tim LaHaye, the most famous of all the, uh, I mean, he's more famous than Hal Lindsey. He wrote Left Behind, and that book, boy, that just, is, I mean, how many copies of that sold? 10 or 20 million? Left Behind? Come to find out, Tim LaHaye, his books also were ghost written by an, another man. Ghost written. You know what a ghost is, my friends? That's a spirit. But these were written by other men. And Tim LaHaye's been taking money. He accepted, I think, about a million dollars. It doesn't matter what the amount is. From 
uh, under the table from Mooney cult leader, Reverend Sun Myung Moon. And, and Jimmy Swaggart? Well, oh, we've all heard too much about the Bayou boy. I don't think I'm going to talk about him today. But all this pre-trip began with all these people, these, you know, ghost writers and all that and stealers of other people's ideas. But, but really, pre-trip can go all the way back to the late 1800s when a man, a Kansas man, a swindler, a criminal, a crook named Cyrus Schofield put out the Schofield Bible. It turns out that Cyrus Schofield is a crook, a scam man. He fled the state of Kansas. Too many lawsuits and people chasing him, including the wife that he abandoned and his kids. But he went to New York City. And there he met up with rich Jews, influential Jews. And he joined a special little club. You know, one of these men's only clubs. I mean, you got to have more money than the uh, the typical working man does all year just to become a member of it. Well, he had a lot of money. All these people had cheated on land and everything back in Kansas, and he joined the club, joined the Lotus Club. And he, and he put out a Bible. They wanted him to put out a Bible. They put out a Bible, and it was published, believe it or not. His Jewish friends sent it to their pals over in uh, Oxford, England, and they put it out as a, from Oxford Press, a very distinguished press. And so this criminal, Cyrus Schofield, has a Bible. He has all the commentary in it. It's not just the Bible. It's his commentary. And in his commentary, he tells what he thought would happen with Bible prophecy. He turned out to be a pre-tribber. Not many people were back then, folks. In fact, prior to the 1900s, almost no one was pre-trib. But now today, they say, oh, if you're not pre-trib, you're nothing. Why? We don't even want you in our, in our church. If you're not pre-trib. But, but in the 1800s, nobody was pre-trib. Now, Schofield brought the good news that no one, no Christian would suffer from bad times. You wouldn't suffer the pain from the Antichrist, horrible acts. No, no, you, you're going to be raptured out of here. Before the bad times begin, that's your privilege as a Christian. And after you're raptured out, then God's going to give this whole world to the Jews. (laughs) Now think about it. They wanted a kingdom. They wanted to be kings of earth. They wanted to be royal blood. But God said, no, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. So the Jews had him crucified, of course. They crucified our Lord and Savior. But now Schofield has told us in his Bible that's accepted by all the Baptists, all the Pentecostals throughout the world, all of these millions of Christians say, oh, yes, Schofield was a great man. He told us we won't suffer. We'll be raptured out. And not only that, but the Jews will, then will, will get, be given the, their kingdom. And, and Jerusalem will be built again as a great city. And they'll rebuild the temple. And, oh, the Jews will be masters of all. Huh? But Jesus says in the book of Matthew, he he said, the kingdom is taken from you. He told the Jews, the kingdom is taken from you because of your wickedness, because of your failure to recognize and to act on the words, the good news that I bring you. You have rejected me and I reject you. That's basically what Christ told the Jews. But these Christians say, no, no, that, that Christ is wrong. He's wrong. Oh, no. Christ said, I'm going to leave you desolate. The house of Israel is, is left desolate. And see your great, great temple built by Herod here? I'm going to tear it down. It's going to be torn down, stone after stone. He didn't have to do it personally, of course. He had the Roman general Titus. One stone won't be left on top of another. You're going to be destroyed. But Christians, they say, oh, no, no, that's not true. Jesus was wrong. 
We're going to put every stone back on top of one another. We're going to rebuild the temple. I will send my money. Oh, yes, my money to the Temple Mount Foundation. I'll, I'll send my money to the Jews and to Netanyahu. They want to rebuild the temple and, and, and put Jerusalem back as the holy city. And, oh, that's what I want, too. I want the Jews to be supreme, and they're God's chosen people. They will always be God's chosen people. That's part of the pre-trib rapture. Really? That's the kind of baggage that the pre-trib rapture, this pre-trib theory, brought along is baggage. It's baggage. Have you ever gone on a trip and you go to pick up the baggage, your wife's got it packed so tight and so much in the, the, the piece of luggage, you, you, you can't even drag it out to your car. You say, sweetheart, we're, we're going to have a lovely weekend trip, but look at all the baggage you're taking. That, that's what they're, they're saying. You, if you believe in the pre-trib theory, you got to bring in all this baggage. This Jewish baggage, the, the Zionist concoction that Christians who bless Israel by giving them carnal things are themselves blessed with carnal things. Do you think that's true, friend? If you bless the Jews by giving them money, and material things, God will bless you with money and material things. If that's what you think, you are in the wrong house. You're not in the house of God. How can Christians think that? Let me tell you something, friend. You want to bless anyone. You want to bless anyone who doesn't have Jesus. That's your first concern. Preach to them Jesus. Oh, I, I agree. Take care of their, their, their earthly things. They need food and, and, and they need clothing and housing. And all. I, I, I recognize all those things. But don't forget Jesus. And these Christians today, they don't even preach Jesus to Israel. Billy Graham told Golda Meir, the prime minister, she said, you've already, he said, you've already got your law. You don't need me to come and do a crusade. Did you know that Billy Graham never did a crusade in Israel? Why, well, they already had their God. His name, of course, wasn't Jesus. They had rejected Jesus. But he said, that's okay. You've got your law. Oh, really? And millions of Christians believe that Billy Graham, he's, he's better than the Pope. He's great. Wow. Many Christians tell me, if you... Bless the Jews. God will bless you. And then they turn around and say, but of course, I would never preach to the Jews. They have their own Talmud. They have their Kabbalah. They have their holy books. They don't need Jesus. That's what Pastor John Hagee said. They don't. He wrote a whole book. Jesus is not the Messiah of the Jews. They don't need Jesus. This Pope this Pope, Pope Francis, says, don't preach to the Jews. They don't need Jesus. Oh, that's wicked. John Hagee is wicked. This Pope is wicked. They need Jesus. What they don't need is more money, more beaches out of Tel Aviv, more military armaments so they can batter the Palestinians. They don't need land, property. They don't need a capital. They don't need a temple. All they need is Jesus. That The temple is... Filthy dirt. Because the Bible says God won't go into that temple. He needs no temple built with human hands, it says in the Bible. These Christians of today have went along. They've gone along with the works of the faith movement. That's oh, attractive. The faith movement. The word of faith movement. Give to get. It's otherwise known as the prosperity gospel. And you can give to Israel to get, too. We're going to talk more about this when we return in just a minute. The pre-trib theory. Pre-trib rapture. Hmm. Can't find it in the Bible. I've looked. Please help me. If you know where it's at, please let me know. Now, don't write me pages and pages. Just, just tell me the one place in the Bible I can go to.